Hello and welcome to the Car Guy Coffee Podcast for the DC20 Unlocked Series brought to you by Drive Centric. For more information or to get signed up for the next DC20 event, go to drivecentric.com. Let's brew! What's going on, car guys and car gals? It's Lou Ramirez, the car guy. And it's Fred Lenard, sub prime hero. And we are Brewing Solutions on the Car Guy Coffee Podcast. And we are excited to be seeing you. And we are coming to you at an incredible time inside of our industry from an incredible place in the industry. We are in Tuella, Utah. Tuella, Utah. It's on the other side of the mountain. From, from Salt Lake City. Literally, you got to drive by the Salt Plains. It's a beautiful drive out here, but it's like such beautiful country. It's very, it feels very Western out here, doesn't it, Lou? Like when you get out here, do you imagine horses and buggies? That's how you feel. And you see it actually as you go down these roads. But there's a lot of transportation problems being solved in this area. And we're excited to be here to be able to help out. The Marcosian Auto Group here is doing some big things. And we're blessed to be able to come out here about once a quarter and spend some time with their team and and really encourage them and give them some new tools and tactics to be able to grow. So I'm excited about it. It's it's pretty awesome. Those the emoji of the mountain with the snow caps on it and the green below. This is it. If you could see out the, on the other side of this wall, it's exactly what it looks like out here, everybody. And it's absolutely beautiful. And what it is that's stunning. inside of this beautiful is just as stunning and is just as beautiful to us seeing car guys and car gals get together to make this entire facility become what it is. It's fantastic. And we absolutely love it. And because we love it and we love the super incredible places that we get to go and the super incredible people that we get to do this business life with, we are pumped up that you get to be with us as we go through this DC20 Unlocked episode as we talk about this incredible super user and how they're taking this incredible technology to the next level. And we're pumped up about it. They actually created a whole position just for her because... When you have this many rooftops, when you have this many dealerships that are inside one group that are using the same uniform CRM, which is smart. I'm going to tell you, folks, if you're using multiple different ones, it's better to get uniform. But having one person to be able to make sure that it's going seamless as possible is so crucial. And that's what this solutionary is doing. And they they really made this whole like this position just for her. But, man, it's such a needed position. I think you're going to see this happen in more auto groups out there. Um, I'm excited to talk with her because I know that she was just we just saw her at the last DC 20, Lou, back in the beginning of March. Energy. And she is a ball of energy. We saw her during the event. We saw her in the after hours and we went up to the excursions, which great time, but definitely a ball of energy. Somebody that we look forward to having on the show. And now that the dust is settled from DC 20 and she's back and ready to go, we have her on the show. So I'm pumped. Yeah, this is exciting. So we got to do what it is that we got to do. And you, know you got to do what it is that you got to do. And tag a car guy. And tag a car gal. And share, 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 share. share, share. share. Get, it get out the there. word out, everybody. Go ahead and get other people into the mix. Maybe asking questions, saying some things. I don't know. <laughs> We're ready to have some fun. But one thing that is consistent that happens with the DC 20 drive centric family is that we have a good time. We have some fun talking about the energy that there is when so many great people come together to make an advance inside of automotive. And this super user is an incredible one that is definitely challenging us on getting our name pronunciations, right? So we're going to give it a shot right now. Car guys and car gals help us to make welcome to this DC 20 unlocked episode. The one, the only Rebecca Boskowski. Hey guys, you did good. The Z is silent though, but otherwise you did pretty good. Much better than I've heard. Bukowski. Yep, you got it. Oh, high five, you're okay. close. close we enough. appreciate you getting us. We should ask before, but we wanted to try. We have That's all good. That's we all good. I appreciate good old, it. Yeah. Good old green pea effort, right? So. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I love the effort. Well, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for uh, giving us some time today. I know how busy your schedule is and to take away even 30 minutes of that time could, could be like a lot of time in your world. So I get that. So thank you so much. We are honored to have you on. When we left DC 20, before we left, we had talked about with Audrey, hey, there's a lot of people here that we'd love to have on the show. Your name popped up. She reached out to you. And of course, you were gracious enough to go ahead and say, let's do it. Let's so do this. thank you so much. You're the last one of the month of March that we're doing. So well, welcome to bookend this amazing month it's my it's a big month for me march is massive when inside my family with love and birthdays and so many things going on so to be able to throw this in this special month and have you come in you're an honored guest and we're excited to have you thank you guys so much for having me i'm glad to be here 
pumped up that you are your presence. We put the microphone back in front of you and we interview you live wherever it is that we are. Uh, but speaking of places we've been, we were at the high energy that there is outside of a DC 20 event for those that haven't been there. And I know plenty of people get tired of hearing us talking about how, <laughs> and they just need to get over it. Cause we're going to keep doing it. We're gonna keep but it. They're awesome. What do you say about the energy uh, that there is showing up to an event like that? Yeah. So the very first night we were in the hotel lobby and running into people and the energy started immediately. Even, even just checking into the hotel, the hotel staff, the energy was buzzing. We ran into some of the speakers at the bar. Glenn was there. And so we got to sit and chat and talk with him and everybody was excited and pumped. And the greatest thing about it is you can just feel the environment of sharing. Everyone's there to take a little something back from from others and like ready and willing to share. Nobody's locking the the answers behind a door. Everyone's there to learn and grow from one another. And that just continued on the entire time we were down there. Heck yeah. And that's an amazing thing to see. You see it, which is beautiful. You get a great perspective looking at as many rooftops as you look at inside one group. You get to see how it's working through these types of people, how this type of management works with this, how certain types of brands work with that. So that's pretty cool that you get that because you guys even have a used car store too. So you understand how all that's slightly different. There is, they're all the same. We all sell vehicles, right? But the mm -hmm. way that we sell cars, even the lenders that we use and how we use those lenders do change slightly when you're doing that. So being able to communicate to your customers using the right CRM is massive. For you, what was the driving force that brought drive centric to where you're at? Was it there when you first got there or did you, were you somebody who was an advocate of having it there? Yeah, we just transitioned our final store in November to drive centric. So we did have four stores that were on for about a year as test stores. We started launching the uh, remaining 11 stores in September and the final store launched mid-November. So we now have all 15 locations live and it was live live with drive. Yes. A hundred percent. So it's, it was a, a much needed change. The way that you can communicate with customers it brought us into the, to modern times. And I think it was just, there were some things lacking with our previous provider and it was time for that change to happen. I did get a chance to actually, I guess, demo it prior to those four stores launching at a store that was live with drive. And so every time I saw my director of sales, I'm like, when are we going to get drive centric? When are we going to get drive centric? And now here we are, all 15 stores are live with drive and it's great. That's awesome. Ooh, That's love awesome. that. That is being live with drive is key. I love that branding that they have. I'm yeah. sure Steve is, Steve is an amazing, just advocate of obviously he's the chief evangelist office officer, right? For the company. <laughs> and he's all about that and being live with drive. It's big because it's a feeling that you have that even just those words bring a good energy. I'm mm -hmm. live with drive. It's a, it's a positive thing because a lot of times we look at CRMs as something that's extra work where at the end of the day, the CRM actually helps you take care of that work faster and more efficiently without having to worry about missing something. It's all there for you to be able to have that tool. So that's great. So being live with drive, having that at all the stores, being uniform, what's been the biggest benefit of that so far? The, the user friendliness of this platform is amazing. So we have, of course, with 15 rooftops, we have people that work for us that are all different ages, all different technology skill levels. And even some of the guys who have been selling cars since before I was alive are able to use it and use it well. And they can send videos, they can text, they can email from a corporate or 30,000 level view it's easy to see everything that's happening at all locations at one time. Like I can log in and I can see every single message that's coming into the group. I can see every single lead that's coming into the group. So it's just, it makes it really easy to be dialed in hundred percent, know exactly what's going on at each rooftop. And I can get as granular or as broad as I want, depending on what I'm looking for. And that is an incredible benefit of the, just the, the technology is that you can go as far out to get a big scope of what's going on and you can get very fine tuned in there and uh, microscopic information you yes. can find. And uh, it's exciting, especially when you're trying to lead a big ship of people and trying to move uh, with a, a rudder that needs to make sure that the turn actually happens, right? Because right. we do prepare lots of reports. We do prepare lots of information, lots of meetings with people and everybody leaves there with, to do's huh. and, and then they often come back with a lot of those to do's. Oh yeah. I still got to do that. We still got to start a process for this. We still got to create a this. And instead, huh. when you have the right tools in front of you and you have the right data in front of you, you can really leave there with some good actionables 
that people know how to get what's intended to be done instead of just leaving another meeting saying, we can't wait to come talk about the same thing we talked about last meeting. Right. (laughs) What have you been able to see as far as the the response of your people when being able to give them the direction and, and know confidently that they can execute? What have you seen as far as the, the, almost the, the belief be for your people with such great tools? Love yeah. That. So I think there was initially a lot of, I don't want to say skepticism, but just I'm telling everyone this product is great. This tool is great. You're going to love it. It was such a drastic change for us in our group that a lot of people weren't necessarily bought in when we first started launching the stores. I had the benefit of coming. I'd been with the group for five years. I had experience. So I wasn't just like some random guy coming in off the street and saying, oh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to send videos and you can text your customers and don't use your cell phones. So I, I had a little bit of buy-in that way. And what I told people when we first started launching is give it six months and six months, you're going to love it. I understand that it's different than what you're used to. And it's going to definitely be a little bit of a learning curve for some of you guys, but in six months, you're going to feel totally different. And I had guys that came up to me at the store that I came out of that are like, this is great. I never thought that I would be excited about sending videos. And they are some of the best users that we have in the group. And they're not 20 something guys that are tech savvy. There is a little bit of a learning curve. It took a little bit of a time for us to get there. And of course, there's always going to be people on the outside that just they're not in it, but especially when you're dealing with this many people, but overall we're super happy with drive centric. And I, I think it's just been great overall. And, and the belief is hundred percent there. The buy-in's there. Oh, that's amazing. And, and I love that you tapped into it. You didn't want, you're very humble. You, what I love about you and, and why you're in such a good position and you're the exactly the type of person that needs to be there is because you have five years of experience of being, whether sells, selling cars, which you started selling cars first. And then mm-hmm. you became a sales manager and worked at the desk for a long time. So being able to have that perspective, and that's why I love that you're talking about that, because you can actually translate that to the sales staff. Say, hey, look, I've been in your shoes. Yep. And I'm telling you, this tool is exactly what I would have loved to have the capabilities that this has. This is, we were shooting like slingshots. You guys have laser guided <laughs> missiles. So let's right. use laser, laser guided missiles and let's crush it together. So I love that you tapped into that slightly, but I want you all to know this, that she is a veteran. She knows what she's talking about. She's been in the trenches. She knows what types of tools help her be able to move more metal and to be able to speak to her customers a lot easier. And using video today is silly if you're not. I'm telling you, shame on you. you if you want to, if you want to keep making excuses every month why you can't sell more cars, start there. Just start doing videos. Mm-hmm. You'll be surprised. Communicate with your customers. Quit sending them texts. Send them a video that they hear your tonation of your voice, the, the way that you speak to them. The Because it could be, it's not necessarily the words that we say unless we type them. Then it is the words that we say. But it's how you say it. People don't really pay attention to the words. They want to feel something. So it's so much better to show a video. Show them like looking at vehicles. Show them everything. What your desk looks like. How it looks like to pull into your dealership. It's so fun to be able to do things like that. And you can all inside this tool. And I love that. There is a slight slow buy-in because that happens. No different than whenever I went from having a regular PC Windows based and I went to Apple MacBook, it was a different transition. But you know Mm -hmm. what? So well worth it once I learned how to use it. And now I don't have to worry about none of the freaking crazy viruses. I don't have all these issues (laughs) with my computer now and it runs so much better. But I had to learn to switch after 20 years of messing with Windows base. What? It was the best switch I ever did. And once I learned, I it's a much easier tool for me. I'm able to communicate better. The whole nine, it gets down to my phone too. So it's all that stuff. So anyway, I love what you're talking about here. And that leads into what I would love to ask you about is I know that if there is a slow buy-in. What are you doing with the people that don't really want to like, because that's like the big frustrating question. Hey, listen, there's a half my staff doesn't want to do it. So why get it? What are you doing to incentivize people or encourage them to go ahead and start trying to utilize the tools inside the CRM? Yes, I do a lot of one-on-one training. I do training in small groups. I do large group training, do virtual training. So I try to come to my team where they are. I work a lot with the sales managers. I talk to the GMs. I report on our weekly GM call, but we have done some competitions like a best walk around competition, best overall video competition, where there's cash prize and excuse me, lunch involved in that. So just to get things rocking and rolling and show them the importance of getting in the habit of sending those videos. But ultimately, once they start doing it, or you've got a couple of people in one location doing it, they start to see those results. We have some locations where our appointment show rates are 30% higher for customers who received a video the same day than customers who did not receive a video. And that is huge. So I can take these numbers 
And like I said earlier, I can get granular so I can show an individual user yep. the direct impact on their own individual metrics as well as the store's metrics. Mm -hmm. And when you have the data to back it up and you have the more car sales to back it up and happy customers and good surveys and good reviews, it's easy. You just have to get a couple guys on and then it spreads from there. And just being available to answer questions and provide support and try and be as knowledgeable as I can for them. And we're rocking and rolling. That's you so are true. you so are true. on the so money right. with all that. Great. See, I love that you're being proactive about how to make this work instead of being reactive. Because the problem with most car people is we're super reactive. That's our business, right? But mm -hmm. if we're proactive with good reactions, we're the best, right? And that's yeah. when businesses run good, culture is always good, and people are selling more cars than they could ever imagine. So I love that. Uh, we got some great people. We got Dylan saying, let's go. And we got somebody mm -hmm. in here saying data is key. Yes, it yes. is. 100%. Mm -hmm. It doesn't lie to you. It's the truth, my friends. And I think it's important to, to be able to shift. So as we've learned what works and what doesn't work and what metrics are important and what metrics maybe aren't as important, we have shifted to, to address that. And it's important as things change and grow and you're seeing what works and what doesn't, that you're ready to make those changes as you need to. And you have to be able to actually know what changes to go into. And that's the thing that that's great about how simple they can make all of the data that they have is because it's still car guys and car gals taking it and going to work with it. And mm -hmm. we're very much stimulated by a good conversation. Good conversations are fun when doing the task of salesmanship or trying to work a customer to the point of either making a decision, getting information, coming in to see a car, having fun in the process, it has to be set with the tone of somebody that's having fun themselves. And the actual utilization of a tool that people like to engage with, it comes across like they're having it fun. And mm -hmm. the data that you have, though, is that it does have a learning curve. The only way that you're going to get the reviews is when you're consistent with putting out the opportunity for the reviews. The only way that you're going to get a result from the videos is to Put the videos out before you mm -hmm. ever have the result that says that it's 30 percent higher before you ever have right. the results that says that these things have to happen and that curve is so important because that's the part where you may not be bought into this yet but you have to at least put your heart into it until you can see the result and that's why it is important when motivating people that you put out there the result that they want and what it is that they are targeting and when you have that many people that you're leading, how is it that you help make sure that you fuse in what they're trying to aim at to the actual mission that you have at hand mm. from your vantage point? Yeah, so I think it's important. Communication is key. I do, like I said, training in all different size groups. And I don't think there's a single, okay, maybe there's five users that I haven't done one-on-one -on -one training that are new hires, but they will get to meet me one-on-one -on -one and in small groups. And when I do those trainings, I try to find out what their why is. Why are you here? Why are you selling cars? And when you get to know people and you learn what motivates them and what drives them, then you can tie it back to, this is why I need you to do this, that, and the other thing in Drive Centric so that you can get to that ultimate goal of your why, right? So Thanks. it's just ultimately, I share what my why is. You guys know I mentioned it earlier. My niece are my everything. My family is super important to me. And yeah. so I tie that and share that with the people that I'm training. Like we're all individuals. We all have individual things that motivate us. Some guys want to hit 30 cars a month. Some guys want to make so many dollars a month. Some guys just want to be able to have a good Christmas for their kids or whatever the case may be. And once you can find out what that motivator is, then you can tie back to it and whatever it is that you need them to do, you can link them together and they'll get there. Oh, Rebecca, hey. you sound like a solutionary. You I'm really, you literally are. I'm digging everything you're laying down right now. It's pretty awesome stuff. And it's exactly the type of leadership mentality you have to have. I, I It all starts with the why. Everything does. It It's such a motivator because people only can keep so much of that new guy, new gal energy, right? We all wish we could bottle it up and just give it back to them whenever they're about three months in, right? Let's right. Because <laughs> you were so hot the first month. It's hard to, but when you have a purpose, when you have that reason to think about Okay, instead of not doing anything at this moment, I should be doing it because I'm, this is why I, I, I'm going right. to do the stuff that makes me uncomfortable because I know it's going to lead me to this path. It's super important. I love that you reach into that pocket and say, hey, here's my why. And it's great that you express that most leaders fall short there. They ask for that why, but they never tell them their why. 
Mm-hmm. Like they try to keep it like a secret or something like, oh, you know me well enough. And it's good right. that you share that because it's, then people see why you do all the extra. It's mm-hmm. really simple to see that. It's really easy. And then they can always remind you. No different. Like I, I definitely, I love that you say that. You got to remind them sometimes, hey, listen, you, sh- you need to make 20 more dials today, but you know why you should? Because you want that vacation. Let's get mm-hmm. you on that vacation. Let's get you that bonus. Let's get you this or let's get you that. So I love that you're coaching that way. That's, that's the, to me, the best way to coach with heart with love and not because I need you to, because we have quotas to hit. We have this or that because they don't care. They have their own quotas to hit. But when you stress them out about all what we want, like how we want it done, then mm-hmm. they're gonna be like, oh, oh, but when we say, hey, it's for you, actually, I want you to do this, not because it's more work, because this more work produces more car deals. Right. More work produces more opportunities for you, which means you have more opportunities to be able to provide for all the goals and dreams that you have. So, exactly. Yeah, I love it. There's a shift too in mindset. And we actually made this mistake launching where we use the word task too frequently. So talking about work plans and quotas, and I need you to make so many calls and so many texts and each store handles that a little bit differently. I have started over the last few trainings that I've done to use the word opportunity. So when I'm coaching about completing work plans and I'm coaching about working the pipeline, anytime that you're looking at a customer profile or a task that needs to be completed, Don't think about it as a task, but think of it as an opportunity to hit your goal, to sell that car, to move forward. And that is just a, it's a culture shift, right? It changes the whole way that you look at everything, not just drive centric or this one deal that's in front of me, but it just changes your whole perspective on why you're here right now. And I love how you are describing the change of perspective and even how taking that specific flow towards tasks Carlo spoke about this at mm-hmm. DC. He does pretty consistently when he's at the DC. Shout out, Carlo. Events. Love you, brother. <laughs> and there are some great speakers that make it to these events, speakers that have been on some of the biggest stages inside of our industry and beyond uh, to be able to convey a message that generally is fused to challenging the mindset mm. of the leaders that are present for an event where we're all trying to refine our processes, Mm -hmm. uh, enrich our actual relationships, and try to make sure that we are solving problems for the future for uh, each other that are collective at that moment. Along with Carlo, challenging with the task, because I know he's very passionate about that. Mm -hmm. That's probably where you got challenged with it though, right? Uh, Yeah, I did. I did talk with Carlo actually not too long. Hannah, our internet director and I talked with him and that planted some seeds for us for sure. Heck yeah, I love that. Yeah. That's what it's about. And that's what DC 20 is about. And that's what drive centric mm-hmm. in core is about. They want to be able to help their clients like it's family. Yep. So they treat all their clients and make everyone become family together. This way, the data that you share, the information, the sales tactics, all that stuff does not matter. It helps. And the more that we help each other, the better this industry is. Right. Mm-hmm. And the more that more, the better, like the more likely we are to get better employees, clients will have less guard up. All this stuff happens if we're all on the same mission together. And I love that he shared that and you took those notes and you planted those seeds. And now you're harvesting some of that stuff, but yet you're still waiting and you're still watering it. You're still taking care of it to make sure that it does grow. It's massive. It's huge. And that's a great mindset to have. That's a growth mindset. I love Mm -hmm. it. Uh, With that being challenged inside of your mindset, what did you feel Mm. was uh, other great takeaways from some of the other speakers? Because they really put an all-star lineup uh, for the DC 20 event. Mm. Yeah, I, Carlo, we already talked about him. He's great. He just has a lot of, he thinks outside the box, right? He does things differently. I think he thinks about things differently. I'm sure his auto group has a little bit of a different approach. So it was great to hear some of those perspectives. Um, I loved hearing about some of the mining from Matt, who you guys had on the show, I think just before DC 20. Miranda. Yep. 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 So we heard some different perspectives on how they utilize those. And I loved the piece that he talked about, but you can tell your guys to go mine, right? but do they know what to do with that list? And if you give them this random list of people, that's not necessarily targeted, what are they going to do with it? They're just going to make calls or maybe even fake the calls and not even do it just so that That's their the manager is happy. happy. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it's because they're, uh, they're not mind readers. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> <But ooh. laughs> he promises yes. dad jokes and he brought one. I'll be I love it. Dad jokes are my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> I love it. I also was able to take away, there was a a bit on reporting, which was really great, where we talked with Hive Analytics and just some different ways that they 
manipulate the reporting. And I don't know if manipulates the right word, but, and also some insight into marketing, which I is not something I've really dealt a lot with, but I took a, a lot away from, from that breakout group as well. Just different questions to ask for vendors and things to be aware of to make awesome. sure that your vendor is working for you and not for themselves. So that was super valuable for me. I love it. And I'm Thank glad you. that you experienced that. And it is, there's so many valuable people there. And, and most mm -hmm. of them, in 99% of the time, the information comes from other power users that are at other dealerships. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about what they do. They bring in people like Len Lundy, of course, mm -hmm. and, and Danelle Degados and the Tito Suave, of course, yeah. certified solutionaries. We come mm -hmm. in to raise some energy in there. Of course, we do training and stuff like that too, but we don't even really talk about it much because we're there to, to raise. We love being there. We love being around that energy that we're going to build some great relationships and network extremely well there. And that's the other side. So the networking is phenomenal. Because um, they do, they bring in special guests and you mm -hmm. get a chance to get to know them, which means they have a whole other network of car dealers that maybe aren't on drive centric, but have a good perspective on how to work a CRM. Mm -hmm. I, I believe, and I know that I think, and I know Lou does too, and he agrees is that drive centric has the best CRM out there. And it's not necessarily just the software. It's the people behind their software. And yeah. some of the best things that are going on. Speaking of that, coming to that, getting to meet your pods. How was that experience this time around? So we actually had the um, opportunity to meet our pod before we actually started launching all 11 stores. We came down to D to uh, St. Louis and we were able to sit down and do a deep dive into drive centric. So we knew what to expect when we were launching. we had a better, deeper understanding of how the CRM worked, how we could adjust business rules and tasks and some different philosophies. Really probably one of the biggest things we took back from that meeting with pod six and Nathan was the drive philosophy. And that opened up a lot of questions where we needed to look inside at how we were doing things and what sort of philosophy shifts and culture changes we needed to have internally in order to really align with the way that drive centric operates. So we were able to then bring that back and sit down with our kind of core group. I couldn't have done this without our marketing department and Hannah, our internet director and Alexis, our BDC manager, all those different perspectives from different sides of the business, I guess, all came together because we were able to have those questions opened up while we were in St. Louis and meeting with our pod. And that was just a, a game changer for sure. Oh, heck yeah. Having that kind of attention on what it is that you have a mission to adjust and you have a mission to change is pretty critical. A lot mm -hmm. of times in most vendor partner relationships, you're waiting for an update. Or mm -hmm. if you're needing something to be fixed, it, it's going to take a while. If it ever gets fixed or addressed or adjusted, there's a whole lot of we shape. We have to shape to what you do and what you've committed to do rather than we all shape to what the customers are doing. Yes. Because yes. that's what's relevant. How are the customers wanting to buy? If we can't adjust and be adaptable solutionaries that brew a solution specifically for that, then we're the ones not taking care of the customer and the ones mm -hmm. that ultimately get forgotten about by the customer that we're all clamoring to try to win. Yes. But when we say, let me adjust to you, how do you prefer it? Mm -hmm. Especially when brewing the cup of coffee, you're getting it specifically how you want it. Do you right. want a splash or do you want a little bit extra? Do you want one or two sugars? Do you want it to be strong? Do you want it to be a lighter roast? Man, All I got, of that I got asked, them. not to cut you, I got asked the weirdest question. The first time I ever got asked at a, by a barista about my coffee, I was asking for a cappuccino. They said, do you prefer it more wet or dry? I was like, whoa, like a little bit more wet, I think. <laughs> Let's try that. <laughs> what so, does that even mean? I don't know. I'll so look. cappuccinos have less or more milk. So I think right. what they meant by that is, do you want more uh -oh. milk? less milk in it so i said no. more milk in it this morning so i said i want it wet so See, we're, still, we're still learning the coffee jargon yeah it, you gotta know these kids these days the things they <laughs> there's always something new i was it like is. i put my pinky up when they said i was like i'll take it oh, wet. I'll have to take it. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> but, but but man, that, that, so much fun stuff but that's literally what you need to have as far as your approach to helping out the the users, the yeah. super users like you and the new users that don't have the reference that you have of saying, mm -hmm. hey, I've seen it in action. I've seen it working. This is why we're implementing this. Those mm -hmm. users that are coming in to say, hey, this is how we do business. This is how our process is. How Help me to enhance it. And is there anything that you can do to adjust it? Whereas normally that's not even a door to they can peek into. Right. With Drive Centric, it's so such a widening gate. I guess that's why they're 
right there at the gateway, right? Gateway to the West. They are literally gateways to helping find new solutions to the industry. I don't yeah. know they, why they don't even use that because they are literally right there. That's that would they, be a they great should. Part. Yeah. They they're listening now. Created right now. Right, that right here at the show. Inspired in by our good friend. Rebecca. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, speaking of solutions and, and working through problems, I had a call with Amy from our pod just before I got on with you guys. And I've had a problem that's been plaguing me for a few weeks. And I'm like, I don't know how to fix it. So I literally, I got on the phone with her for 15 minutes. We talked through it. And I have a solution now for a problem that's been ongoing for weeks. And it, it's just a matter different perspective and they see what works for other groups and we've seen this work in the past this hasn't worked in the past here's where i caution you and they're always they're always really wonderful zoom call chat email phone call whatever what they come to me how i need them sometimes i don't have time for a call and i just want to chat sometimes i need to talk through it and they're they've been excellent and that's exactly how we want to communicate with our customers exactly right that's how our actual customer wants to be communicated with too. Crazy. That's how we operate in a vendor dealership relationship. It's right. Welcome to the future. I could tell you the nightmare <laughs> stories of the complete opposite with many oh of my the goodness, companies. Yeah. So you, That's why this seems they so just, hey, Somebody will be with you soon. Days go by sometimes. There's still no, there's still nothing. Oh, we're going to put a work order in for it. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. It's crazy how that works out. And I think what I love and what out. I know about Drive Centric is that they, that is like such a big deal to them. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they, when they hire those people to take care of those pods, to be inside those pods and all that, they're very specific style of people they're looking for, the people who want to help people, yeah. right? people who can solve problems for people who are excited to do. So. And they do. When you go, we go up there, Lou and I will run through those pods and we're high-fiving. <laughs> they're all in such a good mood. It doesn't matter. They may look at us, we're a little crazy, but they're still smiling and like ready yep. to go. And they're yep. right. Yes. And you're right. We are a little crazy. We're, we're all a little crazy in the car business. Let's just be honest. <laughs> because we have so much spare time you know you said <laughs> right. that in the bio that you had sent us and i love that you talked about game night i'm gonna ask you one last question and it's gonna yes. be about game night. what is your favorite game on game night oh my god it depends on the day and it depends who's who showed up for game night i'm i love trivia we played i cannot remember what it is at the last game night my sister brought it but it was like you had to match your if your icon matched with the other player then whoever shouted out the cat the something that matched the category on the other player's card first got mm -hmm. to keep that card so it's like trivia speed uh -huh. the little i'm a little competitive yeah, i think i played that game too it sounds very familiar i, I love one big trivia game too every time someone brings a card trivia game i'm like let's do yeah. it let's yeah so i'm also a sucker for poker so i'm, I'm oh gonna... <laughs> are you now okay maybe next, next time, time we run into to each other <laughs> maybe you'll be at one of these other dc20s and we'll yeah. have to sit down and get a poker night with some of the players but you know what for after sure. the thing tonight we're all going to sit down in the lobby and get a game of poker let's do for it for sure i'm oh. down i'm 100 okay, percent down do that right, sounds like a good excursion i'm just saying <laughs> We are in St. Louis, home of the yeah. river boats. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> wow. This has been a gr another great DC 20 unlocked. We're over here trying to unlock the unfair advantage. And you definitely are showing people that your dealership saw the light. You went inside, you guys did all the research and found out, yes, this is the best place to do for our business to go forward with. And I'm so glad you all did that with the 15 different rooftops. That's a big deal. I love that you came up through the industry the way you did, even being a, C a CRM director, being that type of person, being able to take sales and be able to have that perspective and bring it in there, being able to learn and still be open to hearing things from other power users and using that and planting those seeds inside your stores to make sure that's happening, being proactive and not reactive and making sure your teams are getting the training that they need, make sure that they're ready to be able to take on and tackle this new CRM. And also for the naysayers, for them to find ways to find joy inside of it. But it just takes a couple champions and you have proven that already too. So keep pushing that and keep doing that. But most importantly, Game night. She kills it on game night. We're going to have some game fun. Night. We're going to have a good time. And we appreciate you for coming in. Lou, you got anything else you want to hit up? Man, I'm just really excited that those of you that have been tuning in with us have got the chance to hear this and hear about what it's like at a DC 20 Unlock. If you have not made it to one of those events, go. make sure that you get your stuff go. set up for success and for a whole lot of fun going to the next level and learning about your capabilities going forward. And as you heard, there's many people that come to these events and aren't already on the platform and they get the chance to learn and they get to hear if they're hunting for horror stories, you can hear the little bit that there may be. <laughs> Usually the biggest horror stories are those that are resisting you trying to help them mm. with a better tool inside of your system. That's true. But with that, there is, like she said, a huge learning curve that has to happen 
based on the habits we have with interacting with customers. It's not get a whole new tool to do the same old thing. It's do crazy, awesome new things with this crazy, awesome new tool that we have. That's what we want to challenge people to keep doing is push the envelope because if anybody's willing to keep growing to the next level, it's our friends over at Drive Centric. And as proof of that, they have made sure to give us the opportunity to share with you the unfair advantage that Rebecca has been using inside of her stores. Make sure that you do reach out to her, blow her up. If you're watching this on the live, if you're listening to this on the podcast or you're watching it right now, make sure that you reach out to her and ask her questions. She is a wealth of knowledge for those of you that want to see how to make this work on a bigger scale or on a small scale. Either way, she's going to be able to make sure to show you how to make it go to that next thing. We appreciate you. We're so thankful. There's only one thing left to really do. And that's drop those F-bombs. And you may have seen us do them a couple times. You may have seen how the moves actually go. But here on the show, you're going to get the chance to do it with us. So go ahead and get the hands on the shoulders and get ready to forgive, focus, and fly with us. On three, one, two, two three. Forget. Focus. focus. Fly. And, and keep, keep growing, growing. Keep growing. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning Love in. Love it. 20 unlocked i am lou ramirez the car guy and i'm frelin arts subprime hero and you've been brewing solutions on dc20 unlocked car guy coffee podcast with the one the only rebecca Bukowski. there we go hey thank you guys we will see you soon we are out